every night. Give me the big one. <coughs> Good Lord. Hi, Jim Cornette. How you guys doing? Maybe I'll get the audio to work in a second. My uh, fucking goddamn dude, I I'm eating carrots if you can believe it. I'm like scarfing down carrots. All right, here we go. Who's ready in the chat? Are you guys feeling sexy tonight? Who's ready, man? How about AEW tonight in Boston? How about we throw some music on? How about that? I'm sitting here eating carrots while I'm watching the rest of the show. I'm alive. The music isn't playing the right way. And you're just hearing me eating carrots. I got tingling. I got all kinds of tingling. I, I'm all fucked up. I swear to God, I got some kind of neurological disease that's happening to me. I, I don't know. It could be. Feels weird. Hit me up, Jim. Uh, Joe, if you're listening, you stupid fuck. He looks like a <laughs> one of those guys that from Long Island that wants to be a white rapper, but he's 30-something years old, lives in his parents' basement with the droopy cap and the whatever, but he thinks he's Howard Stern, and he's got a cool way of talking in the microphone, uh, and he's a shock jock or whatever, and somehow or another he accumulates followers on the Give me on some Twitter. cocaine! Fucking pathetic, so please, nobody listen to anything involving a guy named Joe Cronin because it's just so fucking sad. It has been recently while I've been sick. I'm not really sick. I don't know what's wrong with me. What up, chat? Yeah, baby. Give me some sexy pie. Oh, man. I hope everybody's having a good night. I mean, I forgot they were in Boston tonight. I got to be honest. I got to be honest. I forgot they were in Boston, bro. How are you guys doing? I'm wearing a different pair of headphones tonight, so I'm like trying to see if it sounds any weird. Like I'm like, this sounds weird. These headphones kind of stink. I think Jarrett just needs to be full on insane, and they didn't really do that. But it, I think it'd be better if Jarrett, Jeff Jarrett, was just nuts. You know, like full on nuts. That'd be better. But you know, it's a good thing they were in Boston to get the good crowd tonight because. Man, they needed that crowd. They needed a crowd to make noise because eh, it was an okay show, but, you know. They've certainly done better. Man, these headphones sound terrible for me. Makes it sound like I'm blowing my own bass out of my head. <clears throat> Joe, you think Raw sucks? Uh, usually it does, yeah. There's something going Whoa! On. Up in space, there's something going on. Oh up shit! In this place. I haven't there's even got in anything yet. 
strange gonna happen and things are gonna happen. Whoa, something's, something's happening. happening. It's the sound wave 92. Extraterrestrials, they gave me a shot. Nanotechnology. I'm not me. You're not you. La, la, la. Uh, oh, I'm fucking crazy. Split personality. Scott McKinnon. La, 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 la. <laughs> Didn't go to the show because of work. This was more typical and great first hour then second hour falls off. Soraya and Brit I will give them credit, they pulled off their segment. Seeing slap nuts getting a spot on the PPV is so fucking dumb. Six, five, ten. Whoa! 6.5 out of 10. I mean, that's still not too bad, you know, for what we got tonight. The Soundwave 92 didn't go to the show because of work. Yeah, I kind of am the same same thing. Um, Soundwave, thank you so much for the $51 drop. Let me just read everything you said there because I only got about half of it. The Soundwave 92 starting the show off with a $51 big one. Didn't go to the show because of work. This is more of a typical AEW. Great first hour. Then second hour falls off. Sarai and Britt, I'll give them credit. They pulled off their segment. I thought they pulled it off, too. It just kind of was still a little bit like, ooh. Like, at one point, Soraya lost the crowd because the the crowd was beat. This was very interesting, by the way, this part. If you picked up on this, like, most people might have picked up on this. I, I don't know. But I certainly was thinking it immediately. I was like, oh, no. I think Soraya made a mistake because she was like, Britt Baker, you haven't done anything, and you suck, and all this type of stuff. And it was like, e. The crowd was silent when she said stuff like that because they were like, "Well, the crowd kind of likes Britt Baker, right? The crowd likes Britt Baker, and they know that she's like been the best thing about AEW. So when you sit there and you say that you've done nothing, and I've done all these things, so that was a bad. Honestly, it was not good. It was a bad idea to say that." She should have said, you know, you've done a lot here in AEW, but let me tell you about what I've done. That's what she should have said. You know, you've done a lot here in AEW in a little time, and I'll give you that credit. You've done an amazing amount of, you've had an amazing amount of accolades here in the last two to three years or whatever it's been. But the fact of the matter is, I've been doing this stuff for 20 years or whatever, you know, whatever it is, 15 years, eight, whatever. I don't even remember how old she is anymore. And it's like, you know, she could have told her whole story, but it was the way she really dissed her that the crowd was like, oh, like they were like dead silent because they were like, they didn't agree with that. They were like, yo, yes, Britt Baker's the baddie and we want to cheer for you, but that's a little too wrong for us to cheer for. So that was a, sort of a mistake, in my opinion, as far as the promo goes. Cal Palace Dave is in the house. Louis Erdinetta, hey, how about the election the other day? The red wave thing didn't really you know, go down the way everybody thought. Uh, very interesting, but I don't want to talk about that here. This is wrestling. We're talking about wrestling, um, but I will talk about that at a later time. Um, what I can say is, yeah, I apologize that I've been a little bit off recently. Um, I, I don't know what's been going on. I don't know if I've got some kind of neuropathy in my hands and legs, and I don't know what's going on. I don't know if my sinus infection that I never got diagnosed with, I just think I have one. Maybe it's spread to my brain and I'm freaking out. Or I just have full-on anxiety going on every day, anxiety attacks every day. I don't know. But one thing I do know is I've been very tired at night. Like right now it's 10 p.m. Dude, I feel like it's 1 in the morning or 2 in the morning right now. I don't feel like it's 10 p.m. I feel like it's 1 or 2 in the morning. It's weird. And my neck hurts and feels heavy. It's very strange. And so I I apologize that I haven't been doing as many shows. My, my new uh, job has really been all early morning and all day, and um, we'll see what happens, man. Hey, maybe someday we'll get a, you know what I mean? I'll hit the lottery, and I can do this again longer. Um, but I am hopefully soon I will have my new times, and I'll know, you know, what I'm doing exactly uh, going forward. But what's up? We got Trey Walker in the chat. Uh, I know Rustaf is here. I'll probably head over to Discord in a few minutes to hear from them. But for now, I'll just keep going on my little rant here. But yeah, Soraya, mistake. She should not have said um, that you've done nothing or something like that. You can, you can even hear the crowd. The crowd's like, yeah, Soraya. And it was almost like that scene in uh, Black Sheep. You know, in Black Sheep, when Chris Farley goes, yeah, you guys want to rock? And all the people are like, yeah. 
yeah, yeah, man, I could really go for some pizza right now. And everyone's like, yeah. And then he goes, kill Whitey. And everybody just goes, oh. You know, that's exactly what it was like. Soraya comes out. We love Soraya. Oh, my God, I'm jerking off. I love it. All these things. And then um, all of a sudden, oh, you've done nothing here in AEW or whatever. And it was like, boo. It really kind of all went out the window then. Please play Herschel Walker's election speech on PBS. Wait, he had wait, is it on PBS right now? Is that what you're saying? Is he he's on PBS right now doing doing his election speech or what what exactly are we talking about? Man, I want pizza. Me too. And I'm not really I don't think I'm really supposed to eat pizza at this point. <coughs> well, well, I don't know what he, I don't know what that means. AW has went to shit after Cody. I mean, I will say that I listen. Cody Rhodes was. I've said this since the beginning. I mean, Cody Rhodes is one of my favorite things about AEW or was. So now that entertainment of Cody Rhodes is over in a in WWE. So they did lose something by Cody leaving. I I mean, I immediately was like, oh my god. He was one of my favorite things to watch in AEW. But, I mean, AEW is still fun to watch for me. But it is missing a big piece. You know, without Cody, man, there is a big piece missing. That's his speech. It's fucking hilarious. Oh, really? Oh, I'll have to play it in a little while. Hopefully in a little while we'll play Herschel Walker's uh, speech there because that, uh, that sounds delicious. <coughs> Is there really a football game going on right now? Los Angeles and Tampa Bay. Is that really happening right now? Is there, there's football on Wednesday nights too? Am I crazy? Why am I getting the alert that that's going on? Is that true? That's kind of ridiculous, bro. I mean, do we need... I mean, do we need football every single night? I mean, I guess, but... Jesus. Let me see if I can get AEW dialed up because I want to play the Soraya... <laughs> Oh, man, it's doing that thing where it doesn't... Oh, yeah, it did load. Okay, good. Because I want... Well, first, I want to... You, you know me on this show. We got to play the Acclaim's entrance, as always. We got to do it. And it's here in Boston. Dude, I wish I wasn't... I don't know what I am. Sick, delirious, anxiety-ridden. I don't know what I am. But if I didn't have it and I had some money, I would have gone to Boston tonight and I would have partied. Let's hear it. Let's get... Let's rate it. Rate the rap. We always rate the Acclaim's rap. Let's go ahead and rate it tonight, baby. AW. Acclaimed on the mic, got the place going crazy. Y'all about to take more L's than Tom Brady. Keep the fence swerve, it's awkward. We got the receipts like he's Herschel Walker. I'll make you cry <laughs> till your eyes are burning. I'ma make you say sorry like Kyrie Irving. When you say who's house, they got to add noise. We about to beat two snakes in the ass, boys. This is what people want to see, the acclaimed in action again. And everybody scissoring, baby. Uh, I love it, man. I'm, I'm A lot of my friends, uh, or old friends that I knew that uh, went to the last AEW when I was there, um, went tonight, so they must have been scissoring everybody's asses tonight. Um, but again, let me play that page, that clip of Paige or uh, Soraya, because again, like I said, it was awkward. Here's the, I'm gonna show you the. I think it's a mistake what she said at one point. Let's see. So, bitch, make an appointment. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> that Kyrie, yeah, that the stiff. Kyrie job was great. Watch this. This thing is heating up, man. <clears throat> you know, I think it's really cute you put yourself on a pedestal considering you got handed your position by Tony Khan. <coughs> you got. Now, let me ask you something. She got handed her position by Tony Khan? What does that mean? So, like, th th is that like breaking the fourth wall here or whatever? Like, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? I don't get it. You got you got given your position by Tony Khan. 
when has that ever come out or been said? I mean, I think that that's supposed to be a like behind the wall uh, comment or something like that, or like, but it doesn't make sense because I don't know the there's a I didn't know there was a rumor that you know Britt Baker was handed everything by Tony Khan. I feel like she was given an opportunity, just like many of the women were given opportunities, and Britt Baker has done the best with it, to be honest. So this is where, unfortunately, this is why some of the crowd, like Soraya, has all this momentum. And it kind of like flounders here with the crowd because they're like, but we see Brit, even though we don't like Brit and we're supposed to hate Brit, you know, we see Brit as like somebody who worked hard for this and is actually pretty good, even though we're going to boo her because she's the heel and we love Soraya. But then Soraya says that and it sort of loses the crowd, but then it gets worse. Fed a bunch of QT's trainees. And you've only been in front of the camera for three years, sweetheart. <laughs> I've been in this business for 30, 17 years professionally. You don't know what it takes to be a superstar. You don't know what it takes to even be a star. See, the crowd is kind of like, huh? I mean, she kind of is a star in AEW. I mean, she's over in AEW. She's been the best performing one. So... You know, again, like I said, this just, I think that this was, instead of saying that, I think she said it like, sweetheart, you, you've had a, uh, you've done really well here. You've been amazing for two to three years, but that's, you know, I haven't been here. You know, somebody who knows this business, a veteran in this business, and that way you're, th that's what you're threatened about. I know this business. I'm a veteran and now I'm cleared or whatever you want to do, you know, and that sort of thing. And that would have been better. You know, rather than to say like, you know, you've done nothing, you know, because I think the crowd was like, uh, like, because to, to the crowd who are AEW fans, you know, Britt Baker has done for the last three years has been the staple in the women's division. So I just think it's a mistake to go. She shouldn't have said this um, this way. So this was a mistake because the crowd dies here like, huh? I traveled up and down the UK and all <laughs> over Europe for free because I love this business. Now, she is about to win them back because she's about to, you know, she's about to drop the facts of her life, which are impressive and, and, and admirable or whatever. So, like, they are going to cheer that, but they weren't going to cheer her saying that, like, Britt Baker is not a star and all that sort of thing. And I think that, see, I, I think this is a huge mistake. Like, and I feel like if Booker T or, I don't know, Bully Ray or other wrestlers are out there and they're going to review this, I hope to God they bring this up. Because those type of guys and other wrestling reviewer people who are wrestlers should be bringing up, man, this was a mistake. What she said was wrong. Like, Soraya should have said, like, you are the biggest star in this company. And you have been for the last two or three years. But the fact of the matter is now I'm here. And you think you've done all this amazing stuff. And certainly you have, have been the top star. And you are a star in AEW. But... I've been doing this for 17 years professionally, you know, in 30 years total, and then gone through what she's done, because then it would have it would have presented her opponent in a good light, and then and, and said like just because you've you know you've had this great success for two to three years, it's all gone to your head now. Like, don't you understand who I am and where I've come from? And you just think that I'm just gonna get in some you know I'm I'm not gonna be whatever the hell it is. But the bottom line is telling her, like, oh, you're just garbage. You know, like, the fans are like, huh? Like, I don't get that. You know, they don't, it doesn't compute. Be a superstar. You don't know what it takes to even be a star. I mean, is she talking about WWE, be a star and a superstar? In WWE, you're a superstar, and you can be a star in the be a star or whatever program. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's literally what she's talking about. I don't know. I traveled up and down the UK and all Europe for free because I love this business. I got hit by a car and wrestled the same day because I love this business. <laughs> Dude, that sounds like a great song. Please make it. I got hit by a car and then still went to work. That's a that's a that's a country song. That's a guys, that's a country song. Do you guys realize that? Like, hello? I don't know country very well. I know rap better than I know country, but there's got to be a guy out there. Is there a singer out there somewhere who wants to make a country song? 
out of that, I got hit by a car and still went to work. Like, write that shit down, bro. Listen. Woke up this morning and I paid the bills. Almost got my car repo, but I, I got up. I got up. I got up. I got up because I got to pay the bills. Yeah, yeehaw. My girl just left me, but I gotta get up. And my kid disowned me, but I gotta get up. And my ma don't like me, but I gotta get up. I said I gotta get up. I said I gotta get up. I got hit by a car, but I still went to work. I got syphilis, but I still went to work. I got constipated, but I told myself I gotta get up. I gotta get up. I got hit by a car, and I still went to work. Something like that. It's like that's what grown-ups do or some goofy fucking cheesy song like that because that's what grown-ups do. Because that's what growing up do. Like so it's some shit like that. I don't know, some bullshit. You know what I mean. I handed out refs and resumes to promoters and got turned down for the sheer fact that I was female. I suck 17 dicks in the backstage. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Paige. I mean, Soraya. I had to go there. I had to joke about it. Listen, if it makes you feel any better, I used to come into a sock. You have no idea what it takes <laughs> to make it. Because I was starting revolutions before they were a trend and before wrestling was even a twinkle in your eye. Damn. I've done Madison Square Garden. I've, I've done... done Xavier Woods. <laughs> and the O2. I've done the token. I've been triple teamed live on the internet for three million. Can you imagine? Dude, I'm telling you what. If she went there, and she kind of did a little bit. If she had went there, I would, dude, I would have fucking exploded. I would have loved her to death for the rest of my life. If she had said, I triple teamed several adult men in the backstage. In front of 30 million people, I began the sec. I began my virgins. My, I began my sexual exploits live on the internet for 30 million people to download and laugh at. And yes, I'm still practicing. Like, dude, if she, I would fuck, dude. For I would buy the shirt. I would buy the DVD. They don't have this anymore. I would go to, I dude, I would, I don't care if I have no money in my bank account right now. I don't care. I would steal money to go see her live if she had said that. I, I don't know, I don't know why, but I would just be compelled. Like, I've got to see this crazy bitch who just said that on TV, like, and that's to make me laugh. Like, that is awesome. That is awesome. I don't know. I like I I love I like her though, but I, that would have been that would have been man, she would have been that would have been crazy. <coughs> Don't Google it. I took several bodily fluids from several disgusting men in order to start exploring my sexuality in front of thirty million people on the internet. I was chastised, berated, made fun of. Stalked. Don't Google it. <laughs> Be funny. She said, "Don't Google it." At the end. Oh my God, I no, love her. I'm, in front of an I'm sorry. Bitch. Oh. You're in. You don't know what it takes, Brit. I've been publicly humiliated in front of millions of people. That's. I think she's talking about that there. I bowed my drug addiction publicly. Got a little real there for people. But again, this was great. The only problem I had with it was the beginning where she kind of like 
basically said Britt Baker, like, you don't, you've done nothing, and you're not a star, and you're not a superstar, and you're not all that stuff. And maybe I'm missing something, but I just, I just think that was the only problem. If that hadn't happened, then we're we're talking. All right. You just made the list. You just made the list, brother. I'll tell you that. But uh, great, great stuff there, though. At that point, I thought. I mean, it was a pretty good show tonight. It wasn't. It didn't quite make it into that upper echelon of like seven, eight, nine. But you know, I, I like like. I, oh, fuck, my fucking hand. I keep forgetting I hurt my hand the other day and I'm leaning on the bruise. Um, but like Soundwave said, you know, I think it's a 6.5 out of 10. And, and certainly the Boston crowd helped. You know, obviously you knew Boston was going to be loud and excited. Like, this is their type of place. Um, <clears throat> Boston's always been a big wrestling place anyway. But it also has a lot of those people that like this sort of style too. So, like Philly and New York and Chicago certainly and... Um, you know, maybe a little sp- sprinkle of California there. Um, you know, and so you knew you were going to get good stuff from you. You knew you were going to get a crowd that made the show as good as it could be, no matter what. Like they weren't going to be dead. I've rarely ever seen a Boston crowd that's dead. I think once I I said like Boston didn't seem right tonight. I don't know why, and I remember that. But I rarely do they do that. And it was probably a SmackDown or something like that. Shit bum. I, oh, shit bum. Please play <laughs> Herschel Walker election speech on PBS. All right, Herschel Walker. Is this the new one? Should I play the one that I did yesterday? How about that one? I mean, is it's not on PBS, I don't think, but is it the one from today? Did he win? He won, right? I forget now. Alex Oli, thank you for the donation, man. What's up? We gotta find out and remember if he won or not. Oh shit! The sound wave! 92! By God, he's here! What if the turkeys ate us? What if they belayed us? What if the turkeys ate us? If they had to hate us? Sorry, I don't know. The what... crowd kept this show alive despite it not being a full house. Felt like the best match was the opening eight man tag match. Samuel and Brian's match had some scary botches. MJF and Mox had the best promos tonight. <clears throat> Hope you get better, Joe. I got a, I got, yeah, you know, something about uh, MJF. MJF kind of friggin' nailed it, bro, on that. And it's too bad that he wasn't in Boston, you know, to do it in Boston because. Man, that crowd would have exploded to see MJF. And I actually thought to myself, man, I'm almost shit, man. If I went there and I didn't see MJF, I kind of would have been pissed, bro. I would have been kind of pissed if I didn't see that. I would have been like, what the fuck? There's no MJF? I'm going to lose my goddamn mind. So, you know, uh, 
But, you know, I would have, see, I, dude, it would have been a perfect show if MJF was there. You see the acclaimed, you see MJF, you see some of the other stuff. Th- that would have made it a much better show. But MJF was good. I hope it played for the crowd, you know. Um, he sh- I wish he sort of started off with, like, acknowledging the crowd because then it would at least felt like they had something. Like, he said, oh, hey, he, now maybe he did and I missed it. Let me know if I'm wrong. But I would have said, hey, Boston, obviously I'm not there tonight. There's a couple of reasons. Number one, Boston's a piece of trash city and, uh, you know, I'm a New York guy and uh, we hate you. Uh, and so, you know, I can – but we can usually smell you from over here. Uh, but anyway, the other reason is because my dog, you know, whatever he said – so that would have been cool. But then again, he's a face, so is he not now he's face, right? So he's not supposed to say that. I don't even know what he's supposed to say or not say or do or whatever the fuck anymore. <clears throat> Yo, Soundwave 92 is single-handedly funding the show tonight. If anybody wants to donate and also support the show, um, feel free to do it. I'm sorry that I've been so discombobulated recently, but I've been in some major shit, and I don't really want to talk about it here, but... uh. I don't know what's going on with me health wise, but someday I'll update you and I know what's up, but I know that I don't feel, I feel fucking crazy. Um, and it's not, it it doesn't seem good. I'll tell you that. And what, some of the stuff I got back is not good. And, uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but, uh, I'm trying to still do this as if nothing's wrong, uh, because this is my major thing that I do. Um, and my, my, my new work time is different. And also because of that, I have no health insurance, so I have to dipsy doodle around trying to figure out what's going on while waiting for health insurance to come in while I switch jobs. And so sorry about that. Um, but Soundwave ninety two, you are a beast, and uh, thank you for that. Uh, that being said, John, I will answer you in a minute. I see your Patreon message. I'll try to get that uh, going for you. Um, and for the guy who mentioned it, yes, I will give you the donation link. I did not pin it. Uh, here it is. That I, I thought I did pin it. My bad. I thought I pinned it at the beginning of the show. I'm a goddamn moron. Hit the like button, though. We can get to 100 likes. That'd be nice. So let's hear a little bit more of this Soraya thing after I read the rest of this. So yeah, John Moxley, good promo. Good to see him out there. MJF, great promo as well. Unfortunately, not in front of the crowd, but really good what he said. Um, Yeah, the, the crowd kept the show alive. And it wasn't a full house in Boston. I mean, that is that is kind of surprising because they were at Aganis Arena, I believe. And Aganis, if I recall, doesn't Aganis hold 11,000 people or less? Or maybe less, 6,000? Does it hold 8? Maybe it's 8,000. I don't know. Let me just go look it up. I'm retarded. Yeah, I was right. Well, I was wrong, and then I was right the second time. Not, I said 8,000. I was wrong. It's 7,000 people. Aganis Arena. Only holds 7,000 people. So I am shocked that they didn't sell this place out. Because, again, it's like a college arena for Boston. Um, it's not, you know, a massive thing. <coughs> you know, that's not... It's a little shocking that that didn't sell out in Boston, I got to be honest. And, you know, now when I was there, it didn't sell e- sell out either for the second... For the second ever AEW, obviously, I was there, and um, the the section here, the this this section was ha- was half full, this section was about a quarter full, and then the other two were empty, uh, and I was sitting in an empty section, kind of. So, but it was almost sold out. So, they, I mean, they missed it. They missed the sellout by about. I don't know, 800 tickets or 600 tickets. I wonder how much they missed it by tonight. I did not get pictures sent to me yet from in the area. Maybe if I checked my Facebook, some of my actual friends actually probably went there. Um, but I haven't looked yet, so maybe. That's interesting. I haven't thought about that. Um, let's see couple different messages but they're i think they're crap they're random ones i don't know um is that set up for a high school graduation yeah that's what it looks like that looks like a high high school graduation setup no doubt about it uh soundwave 92 uh thank you for the 29 dollars let's hear the rest then that gets better page got i mean sarai got better i've given my career (laughs) and my neck for this business well no you haven't because you're back you don't have a clue what it takes to make it but here you go, Britt. Here's an, another opportunity handed to you on a silver platter. 
This is gonna be my comeback story, and this is gonna be your biggest match of your career. It's gonna be you versus me at full gear. Oh, whoa! Damn, you heard that? Oh, wow. And yeah, I thought I thought the whole thing was really pretty good. It's just the only thing that I didn't like again was her putting Britt Baker down at the beginning, like you've done nothing and you're not a star and all that sort of stuff. I thought that was a heel type of thing to say in front of a crowd that really does like Britt overall too, just like they like Soraya. So that kind of, like I said, that pumped the brakes on like the crowd really cheering for her at that point. So <clears throat> we'll see. Um. Mustafa, you sex beast. Let me see if I can get you on here. You want a piece of this, Daddy? Yellow, yellow, yellow. What did you think about what I said about Soraya's promo, about how she kind of said Brit, Brit is no superstar and all that stuff? I think that was a little too wrong. I didn't really like that part. Oh, microphone's fucked. Hold on a minute. We'll figure it out. Try to stick... Stick it all the way in. <coughs> um, stick it all the way in. So, yeah, great. You know, opening match with the Acclaimed was good. Crowd really was hot. Loved it. So, good opening match there. Good decision on the match. I think it went well. Entertaining. You know, the Acclaimed got to do their opening. Then they have a match. That's perfect. Um, weird that Jim Cornette recently mentioned on his show that, you know, why don't you just have them have matches again like they used to do? That's what people loved about them. And I thought the same thing. And then tonight they had a match. And then, and then after their, you know, great opening, good match, introduction, we're in Boston. Um, on comes MJF for this promo. It's good stuff. About full gear. I'll try to come back to Discord with Mustafa. You. you haven't been seen on AEW television since the firm's brutal attack. <coughs> so with your big match heading into full gear for the world heavyweight title, how are you feeling? How am I feeling? Um, you know, after the firm attacked me. And good promo. I mean, this is really what I. So what I didn't realize about this when I saw it, I missed the intro part. I didn't. I, I know that he looked like he was on a podcast, but I thought maybe he really was just cutting a promo into the AEW camera. But it was from some podcast or show that he was on. In a very cowardice fashion, uh, doctors informed me that if I wanted to be 110 percent come full gear, I definitely shouldn't be traveling on the road. And to be frank, the only thing I'm worried about is that match at full gear against John Moxley. See, this is the most important match in my entire career. But what I don't think wrestling fans understand is this is also possibly the most important match in the history of our sport. Allow me to explain why. <coughs> this could be the potential crowning of the next face of the next generation of professional wrestling. You see, every once in a while, every once in a blue moon, really, we see people that lead the charge of a generation bring professional wrestling to new heights. Guys like Bruno Sammartino, Dusty Rhodes, Ric Flair, guys like Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold, The Rock, John Cena, all of these men were generational talents. <coughs> and that is exactly who MJF is. So here's what's going to happen. All I have to do to etch my name. By the way, speaking of that, this audio, this audio on this podcast, this guy's, this guy's got some electrical interference. I don't know if you guys hear that. That's not me. This guy has got some electrical interference on his podcast. I don't know if it's, and it could be, a, it's usually just a wire. A wire's touching another wire. A wire's touching an outlet. Anyway, nobody gives a shit. This is just, I happen to hear this. Into history. See how loud? It's loud, too. It's like, this guy has like $10,000 cameras. Whoever this guy is, a radio host, a podcast host, I don't know what he is. But <laughs> his setup is worth thousands of dollars, and he's got this going on. Is to have a long, fruitful world title reign, and the only person that's exactly who MJF is. So here's what's... You hear that? This, this guy's got like 20 grand worth of equipment in his studio. He's got 20 grand worth of equipment in his studio. MJF is on there, and... This is literally coming out of the microphone. So 
So, bro, listen, whoever you are, Richie Rich, uh, podcaster guy, um, you know, get an engineer to fix this, please, and buy copper gold-plated, buy gold-plated wires only. Gonna happen. <laughs> Keep them away from the, ele- the uh, power sources. All I have to do to etch my name into history is to have a long, fruitful world title reign. And the only person <laughs> that's getting in my way is John Moxley. Now, I'm not going to sit here, big cat. I'm not going to sit here and I'm not going to pretend that John Moxley is an easy competitor to beat. See, I don't like you, John. I think you're a low-life scumbag piece of shit. I think you're from the slums of Cincinnati. And I think you have absolutely no class, but I do respect you. This is the opposite of what Soraya did with Britt Baker. She was like, you're nothing, you're not a superstar, and all that stuff. See what I mean? Like, it was kind of a mess. But then it got, but it was still pretty good for them. Because, John, you weren't born to be a world <laughs> champion. Matter of fact, you were born with two left feet and not one single athletic bone in your body. Oh! However. Shit, bum! I respect you. Jeff Jarrett took a shot at BBB Braun ST, 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 stupid. He took a shot at Braun stupid tonight, of course. I mean, he should, because they probably wanted they. I don't even. Maybe they didn't even want Braun in eight because because Braun said he wouldn't go anywhere but WWE. That's why. So they were they were like, all right, and he probably hated working with them over there. I mean, Braun is such a moron. He told everybody when he was cashing in his briefcase. I'm talking about the character. You know, the real guy. I don't know the real guy. You know, the, uh, what's his name? <clears throat> Adam Chef. Uh, Adam Shear. I don't know. Adam. I don't know the real guy. Adam Shear. I'm just talking about the character on WWE Braun Strowman ridiculous you raised a piece of shit uh Jennifer Muppet Baby has become a member 15 months Jennifer you are the balls thank you Jennifer yo Rostafa what's up let's try this again let's try this again Rostafa you play with my balls uh. can you hear me yes how you doing how are you doing can you hear me Jesus Christ. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? <clears throat> Yo. Joe. Yo. Yo, 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 yo. Joe. Yo. Can you hear me? <laughs> can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, what's up? You want to get wet? Uh, I'm actually dry, unfortunately. So oh, you're dry down there. Hey, uh, what did you think about what I said about Soraya being like, you know, you're not a superstar to Brit and all that stuff? I thought that was weird. I like that didn't go over well. I want to break this promo <laughs> down because there's a lot to talk about. Well, um, okay. You want to start at the beginning? Go ahead, start at the beginning. I already said my thing. Acclaimed, good prep, good rap, good match, good opener. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I mean, we can start from the top if you want. I mean, <laughs> Let's start right you know, there. Let's start right there. We'll just zoom. Yeah. Through. So. So basically, the the, the eight man tag I thought was the highlight of the show for me, just because a you, that first hour was so strong. Yeah. On the on the show, by the time we got to the second hour, I mean, granted, the main event was what it was, but, but the first, I mean, we'll even talk about the main event too. But I don't know. It's just like the second hour just plumped. It just it was it was like almost like a full flop. Yeah, I just started taking a, a nose dive. Yeah, and again, thank God for that Boston crowd. I mean, I've always said the Northeast is always one of the best crowds in the world, but <laughs> man, it just it was something else, man, just dealing with that second hour. And granted, you know, thank God. I mean, I'd rather take that second hour of program than what I saw on Raw this week. <laughs> yeah, no, me too. I agree that Raw was so bad, but um, I mean, good luck on Ram- to Rampage. Like that crowd was just sucked. I mean, that crowd I don't know, bro. I mean, it was the show's missing MJF. If he had come out at the end or something, or toward, right before the main event, it would have helped the second hour. The promo was good in the first hour, but I don't know. Man. I mean, I mean, for me personally, I get it because they want to continue the storyline of him being injured. In a way, yes, he did go on a podcast, and yes, he wanted to at least send that in as like a precaution, saying, "Yes, I'm still on the show," and I'm pretty sure he'll be there on Dynamite next week. Because that's the go-home show. Um, and also, I believe Rampage next week is going to be live at the Prudential Center the day before the pay-per-view. So I don't believe he has any other choice but to help <laughs> sell it. Uh, as far as what they're going to do, I'm pretty sure it's just going to be a promo in front of Moxie's face and that whole thing, which is fine. Which also brings me to the question, I mean, again, we're going to go through this whole show, but 
it begs the question that I've been pointing out over the past couple weeks that this is all just a setup for the firm to screw Moxley along with MJF to get to get him the title. That's what I'm feeling like this what this is. And even Moxley said in his promo that, you know, I'm not falling for this <laughs> yet. Would he do a little basket for the it? ass off the concrete? I mean, I'm just so Whoa. sick of you little meth head devil worshippers. What? I'll be honest. I'd like to take a big bite out of your Wait, face. The three dollars should be the right. The... Just want to give Jennifer a shout because it's her birthday today. Oh, I'm already my birthday this Sunday, and I am in the big three o club. Yes, you are, sir. You are down below. Happy be birthday to you. You should see it down below, Soundwave. Uh, happy birthday, Jennifer. Jennifer Muppet Baby up in Canada. Happy birthday. That's fucking awesome. Soundwave, happy birthday this Sunday, man. We'll hopefully shout that out on Sunday, man. I hope you have a good birthday too, man. Thank you so much for the donation, Soundwave. Single-handedly keeping this show alive, man. Good Lord. Imagine if Soundwave didn't donate tonight. I'd be fucking dead. <laughs> um... I appreciate that, man. Jennifer, thank you. Have a good night. Um, mm. Don't yeah. get drunk, though. <laughs> you know, what if the firm shows up, though? And I mean, you would think that after this that they're going to show up and screw MJF. So they may show up and surround him. So you think they're going to, like, surround him in the ring or something like that, and then, like, they'll turn and attack Moxley, and that's how he'll win the title? Yeah, and honest to God, that's the best way he could start as, you know, because the thing is, MJF, even though that, you know, even Moxley said, oh, he's been having conflicting issues, this is all just part of the plan just to get him the title. And again, he needs, especially a guy like W. Morsley, to really be like his, you know, his Sid to his Sean. Morrisley? Morrisley, I'm sorry, Morrisley uh, to his Sean. Morrisley. Like no, it's Morrisley. You're saying Morrisley. Oh, my God. I, I love, dude, I love I, your fucking weird things that you do sometimes i love calling them out it's so fun well i could call you out on a few you, things but that well you can, right. i mean listen you can call me out and be in a retard but i mean i just you know it's not <laughs> it's not it's not it's not often that i can correct it's not often that i can correct somebody on like the pronunciation of something you know what i mean we're talking uh, about big casts right yeah, I'd rather call him Big Cass because that's probably better for me just to remember him as like in his heyday when he actually was making a lot, a lot of money. But again, he, I mean, again, he probably gets was, a good decent. Was he really days, making a lot of money? I doubt it. Through merchandise? Absolutely he was. Well, I mean, I get, I mean, for me, it's a lot yeah, of money. Like, saying that means Enzo was making a lot of money. Listen, if you made, listen, they, they made about like what, $180,000, $150,000. That's pretty, that's a lot of money to me. But probably, probably more than that, especially how know. over they were. Yeah, yeah, they were over, but they're caught. They still had their tiny little NXT contracts at the time. They never no, got no, no. Even even when they met to the main roster for a year, they were still pulling ranking in dough, especially when they were teaming with Cena. Oh yeah, their stock increasing even at that point. But uh, says that's, his, that's, that's says his, his, they think his net worth is like fucking, I don't know, sixty thousand dollars. <laughs> like it could be more, but I mean. I mean, I, mean anyway, I don't know. We don't we don't really know the contracts, I guess, so who knows. Yeah. But what we do know is that the first match was great. Uh good opener. Of, uh great opener. Um again, what I liked about it was even in the entrances where when Swerve and our glory <laughs> were coming down to the ring, uh, you know, Swerve's trying to get a high five and Keith is not acknowledging that. Um which, you know, again, throughout the match they were building that, okay, we're we're here, we're a team, we're trying to win here. And it's just, you know, I'm pretty sure either at the pay-per-view or, uh, at, or like, no, I'm sorry, during the pay-per-view or after the pay-per-view, we're going to start seeing the feud between uh, Keith Lee and Swerve, um, and that team is just going to break up because I don't, I just don't see the acclaim taking an L at the pay-per-view. No, yeah, I don't think that. I don't think so either. It would be stupid if they did because the acclaim is one of their highest drawing attractions right now. Dude, they get the biggest reaction on a weekly basis. Can you believe that? Yeah. Uh, and I, wasn't, it, I wasn't even talking about their reaction. I was talking about their merch sales alone. Uh, yeah, no, no, I know. No, no, I understand that. But, <laughs> I, but just when you just listen to the reaction that they get every week, there's no reason why. Even if they weren't selling as much merch, I still go with the biggest crowd reaction and the biggest response. And the fact that they're constantly, it, it, when Keith Lee especially is in the ring, they're constantly going, uh, scissor me daddy, which at first was ba uh, basking in our glory. And I'm like, this is great. 
They literally it's, it's, they they told they parodied that guy's fucking cheer, which is hilarious. Keith Lee's which, like, wow, okay. Which then elevated Billy Gunn's stock even more when he, his stock has been pretty low for the past number of years, only just being associated with DX <laughs> and such. And he's had a completely new resurgence. And, and what he's like in his like mid fifties, and he looks the way that he looks. Bro, I'd I'd push daddy. I would have. I'd start pushing daddy ass. I mean, it's too bad he's always in the position of not being able to be a world champion. But if MJF wasn't on his quest like MJF is, dude, wouldn't you put Billy Gunn like against like whoever the bad guy heel was to win the title and make Billy Gunn your world champion for the first time ever? Billy Gunn does it, and he's talking crazy shit and the daddy ass chance. I mean, dude, he literally could become the world champion. Because of this, he would be a stuff. great number one contender. He would be a great number one contender for well, the title. You know, a good story with MJF. That that could be MJF's MJF's first opponent could be Billy Gunn. He'd be like, "You never won the big one, Billy, and that's your problem." Like, and can you imagine, Daddy asks for his MJF. Now MJF wins, but it would be that'd be a story right, right, right. there. It, it, it would it, it wouldn't be a pay per view match, but it will definitely be like an on TV you know, right, on like TV dynamite match. main event that night, like Billy Gunn. Yeah, probably, you know, it's, you you get your shot, Billy. You know, like, oh, can you imagine the stuff that MJF would say to him? Like, you just weren't good. You know, it's not that you weren't good. It's just you weren't great like the other guys around you. And now you're in AEW and you think, oh, I finally got a shot to win that big one. You think you got a shot, Billy? How about tonight? You know, and of course, then they hit him in the balls at the end and something, stuff like that. (laughs) And he never, you know, whatever, they cheat and they beat him. And and I've said this before, too. I've said this before. MJF being the champion that he was in it. Remember in the promos, he kept on saying, like, you know, oh, I wasn't big enough for the big time. I'm on a quest like Jericho's on a quest. I'm going to beat every former WWE employee as a champion just to make my point that, yes, I'm better than you and you know it and not whole shtick. And which, again, he said that the title would be a bargaining chip. So if if he's being the champion for over a year and I don't see him going to WWE or dropping the belt, you know, even after uh, his contract is up. Hey, hey, you never know. I highly doubt it. Yeah. Like at at this point, MJ, AEW needs MJF more so than MJF needs AEW. Right. And Tony Khan is going to do everything that he can to keep him because he's probably the most valuable commodity that's a legit heel, even though that he's loved and blah blah blah. You know. Right. Yeah. So, but uh, going far, I mean, again, I give that first match probably the I don't know star rating. I don't know, like if you want, I give it a. Th- Three in a, in, a, in a three quarter out of five, you know, as far as being the best, as far as like it was, uh, it was fun. It was one of those things where it was fun, you know. I didn't even mind, and it's one of those things where the crowd loves a lot of stuff. So because the crowd loved it, like I couldn't, you know, I thought it was good too. It was just fun. It was a fun time. Yes, and then uh, of course, uh, then we see a video package coming after uh, after break where we get Stokely basically saying that M- uh, <laughs> MJF is a John Moxley dick rider, which I was like, how in the heck did that make even? Air? I can't believe they did. They said dick rider. Dude, I was in my living room. My youngest uh, two kids were with me. Um, they were playing games together neck and they were sitting around the couch and he goes, you John Moxley dick rider. And <laughs> my daughter, okay. my daughter goes, did he just say what I think he said? And then my son, uh, Finn, the six year old goes, that's a bad word. I'm like, no, it's not. It's a name. And then my daughter was like, no, that's a bad word, Dad. I'm like, no, it's it's a name. <laughs> Wait, your, your your daughter's smarter than you? Holy God! Well, that oh, does. Man. What the hell does that mean? She's smarter than me. <laughs> she huh? understands that it's a bad word. Not no, only a name, but I but I understand it's a bad word. Wait a minute, but I understand it's a bad word. So how does that make her smarter than me? <laughs> well, I mean, that's what we want to do, right? We want our children to. Outshine and outclass. I just don't know, but I don't get this example. I'm confused by this. I mean, yeah, my daughter probably is going to be smarter than me, but that I don't understand why I know. I know Dick means a name. I'm kidding, dude. It's also a name. I'm kidding. All right, why don't you? Why don't you fucking get a girlfriend? You fucking cock sucking fucking. Why don't you not tell everybody about your girlfriends of the past and go to a theater show? You fucking goddamn fairy fuck. And I'll get my money. You are so that a marriage will. You're a questionable, sexual, questionable individual. Okay. Okay. First off, the kids are not the future. Have you seen some of the shit the kids are doing? <laughs> yeah. the Damn trap music. Look, the, look what happened to the election because of the kids that went out and voted. Uh, I mean, they're putting NyQuil and chicken. They're eating fucking Tide Pods. Kids today are fucking Wait, stupid. wait, 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 wait. You sure it wasn't grape soda? Now, the Tide Pod thing was like eight years ago, but I'll give it to you. 
Which, by the way, the Tide Pod thing, and now they're putting NyQuil. Those people are now in charge of HR departments. The kids that ate Tide Pods nine years ago or eight years ago, they're in charge of fucking HR departments by now. They were 16 and 15 eating Tide Pods. Then they went to college at some shithole, and now they're fucking running the HR department. They'll probably fire me one day when I'm 50. Division three schools, Division two schools, what have you. Yeah. It's it's sad. But uh, moving on. So we had the uh, second match. We had. uh, Eddie Kingston taking on uh, Ethan Page. This match again, I it was just nice to see Eddie on back on television, even though he's been you know he's been back obviously for a bit of a minute, and it, this just felt like a natural, just like you know, kind of like brawl slash like you know e- early ECW type of a match, and uh, just basically just beating the crap out of each other. The finish, though, I was thinking, oh god, they're gonna botch this. Luckily enough, they didn't. Ethan Page going for his uh, razor's edge or ego's edge off the uh, second rope, which looked great. One, two, three. Ethan Page gets the win and advances in the tournament. Um, I mean, I'm assuming a babyface is going to win this tournament if MJF goes over. <clears throat> yeah, that's a good point. Good. Um, yeah, it's probably a babyface. That's a great point. Uh, who's in the? And I'm trying to think of who's. I mean, listen, all at Ego Page or whatever. That guy is so boring. I don't even care. That guy is a you boring know, pile of trash. Funny. I saw the package that they made uh, a couple hours ago before the show started, and it was uh, Ethan Page taking on Eddie Kingston in like uh, the, the you know the uh, independent territory. And honest to God, it was very basic promo from from Ethan. Eddie was eating him up in a promo he normally would anyway. And in ring, I mean, yeah, they beat the crap out of each other, but it was almost like it would it, it felt it just didn't feel like as authentic. It didn't feel real. It just felt like, you know, a guy who just looked like a good-looking good, good looking guy that just wants to get the crappy bat of him, which is pretty much what happened in this match, even though he got the W. Um, yeah, I mean, again, it just it just goes to show that there's just a lot of... I mean, again, Tony Khan believes in these guys, and again, I'm not... I don't know why, against... man. He is like Bobby Roode without the Roode. He's like... I was good. I didn't want to say that, but yes, you, <laughs> yeah, you, you said it for me, so... He's like generic. He's like replacement Bobby Roode. Like, we need a stunt double for Bobby Roode. Do we have one? Oh, here's this guy, Ethan Page. He really... I'm sorry, I'd say it. He is so generic. I don't even know. The fact that that... I mean, listen, he's a pretty good wrestler, I guess, generic... It's just that guy's on TV, and it's like that's enraging to me. He's basically the Bobby Roode or Kaz of like the early portion of their careers in TNA, like really early portions of their career. Yeah. And it's not a bad thing. In a he's sense stiffer where... though. Bobby Roode had a little more snap to him. Ethan Page is a little too stiff too, out there. Well, Bobby thing... Roode wouldn't do bad in AEW. Well, that's the thing, Bobby Bobby Roode. Again, all intents and purposes, I always thought he was going to be the next Triple H or you know something like that. AJ would be the next Shawn Michaels and that <laughs> whole thing. But Ethan, I can't compare him to anybody. Yeah, he just seems really like, like bro Barry Horowitz like is better. Oh no! Oh, like no. I'm serious. Like Ethan Page, like do anybody on the like I mean almost anybody. The Bill, Billy Gunn's sons, if one of them was in a singles competitive, they'd be better because they actually show like emotional and have this charisma. I don't think Ethan Page has has much charisma. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, I I don't want to use the term. And again, he's not a vanilla midget by any means because again, he's tall and he's got the look. He's got something. But, it's like it's like he's a six out of ten look, a six out of ten in the ring, and a six out of ten personality. It that's what it is. Like he's just. I, yeah. It's like he yeah, makes like the cutoff to to be on TV, but that's about it. Yeah, like I know you, people who actually know him. Uh, in, in in real life, and he's actually a really decent guy. Oh, I'm sure he's a good guy. That might be the problem. He seems like a good like a he seems nice. Well, Sammy Guevara has that same problem too, where he he's just a really decent guy, but then all of a sudden, really, like, you know, wait it, a minute, it, it, no, really wait a second. Thought, Sammy Guevara has that problem. On. He's been a douchebag in real life to people. I mean, listen, uh, I, I, I I I love Sammy Guevara, but I mean, he's been. Wait, wait, wait. That's it's why like, that see that's why Sammy's good. Sammy's good because he's, he's so charismatic and wild and stuff like that. I love Sammy Guevara. Right. I'm just saying. I'm just saying outside of the ring. I mean, again, I don't necessarily consider him like a douchebag, even though he most likely gets into fights with people for whatever reason. But again, that's more so the boys, not necessarily <laughs> the fans. Well, who's talking about the fans? Well, I mean, again, I thought you were referencing in terms of like you know how like you know like I said, I only know a few guys. I don't know what you're know talking him. about right now. 
Dude, I was just mentioning in the sense that Guevara is like, you know, people would consider him like offhand. If like somebody who doesn't know wrestling and somebody who just like saw this guy just walking down the street, just think of him as an average dude. But then all of a sudden you get somebody, let's say like um, like Jericho or even somebody like that, even with tenure in the business, you turn your head and going, I know this dude and I want to I wonder what he's up to. You know what I mean? I don't Gavara. know. I, you've completely lost me. I don't know what we're talking about right now. This, but I, I'm finding it fascinating, though. I want to know what you were talking about here, but I don't know. We're talking. We were talking about <laughs> Ethan Page and just what, what he's being compared to. Well, I'm comparing and him to like wrestling and stuff like that. But you're saying stuff about people outside the like, ring. We don't know what anybody's like outside the ring, really. I mean, like no, 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 no. In terms of Ethan Page, because I know people that know him also in the sense that he is a decent dude. Like you should watch his vlogs and stuff like that. He's a funny guy. I believe but that part. It was when you get to Sam me that I didn't know and then after that it sort what? of trailed into I don't know what yeah yeah I'm just saying in terms of kayfabe in terms of like you know the, and this is another reason why kayfabe is dead to a lot of the boys in the in the, in, in the business that want to try to be like let's say like an MJF in the sense where you want to try to keep everything real but this guy can't because it just doesn't his career his Charisma on on camera or lack thereof, or however you want to really focus it on, it's not really as appealing as let's say somebody like MJF or Sammy Guevara. Well, you know what I mean, it just I'll, doesn't come out. He's just boring. That's what it yeah. is. Yeah, he's boring. It doesn't. It's he's not bad. He's just not. It doesn't pop. Which I, I but and by the way, you can have a guy like that on the roster because he's just there as a body. That's fine. And if he's a great person. And you really like him and stuff like that, and you're looking for a body, and you're looking for some guys who are just bodies, then that's fine. But uh, uh, but like, and he's just a bad guy who's not too crazy. He's not going to overshadow anybody, and he's going to wrestle Eddie Kingston. And of course, the Boston crowd is going to like Eddie Kingston. I know Eddie Kingston's from New York, and we have a you know we don't like each other in New York and Boston, but we but we do. We also see you know we like Eddie Kingston. He's the type of guy. He's the type of he's like a Boston guy. He's the type of guy you want to have a beer with and just want to fight. Except for I, I, except I, I know the real Eddie Kingston, and I don't want to have a beer with him because he'll probably tell me about how I need to save somebody's life or, you know what I mean, the fucking, I don't know what the fuck. He'll try to get me to join in Tifa or something. But I do like Eddie oh, Kingston. Um, you know, he's got he's just like, I br- brother, we don't need to go into it, but the guy's covered in symbols, and I leave symbols to the symbol-minded and George Carlin. So we so we'll at least transition into this, and it's not that much symbolism. But we had Renee interviewing Rouge along with the Dark Order. Basically, Rouge says that he respects uh, <laughs> Ten as far as his you know his look, his ability, and that if he wins uh, the tournament and ends up get, getting the, uh, the championship, that he would give uh, Ten a title shot. Then still recall <laughs> Rouge a Rouge bag. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was dumb, I but I liked it. I laughed at it. It was funny. yeah, I, yeah. It was mild humor. It was all right. <laughs> So then uh, Davari then brings out a random, I don't want to call him a J-bro, but a random guy that appears to be a butler with a wad of cash. Or a you and, might, gay friend, it could be. Well, I mean, I, I don't judge, but at any rate, well, it's we have wrong, uh, nothing wrong with it. Warlow, Warlow uh, comes out, followed by Samoa Joe, um, and it was a quick match, obviously, and beats Davari, one, two, three, after the Powerbomb Symphony. And uh, Warlow gets a microphone, calls out Hobbs, and Warlow tries to challenge Hobbs <laughs> to a match at full gear for the title. And then out of nowhere, Hobbs, I'm, I'm sorry, Warlow says to Hobbs, you know what I mean? I'll take every title in this company. And then out of nowhere, Joe smashes uh, Warlow behind for with the, uh, with, with the ROH title. And at first I'm thinking to myself, well, it got it, it. It barely started before. You know what I mean? Right, it went right. There they go. And almost like WWE did with them. Yeah, and then of course, you know, Joe. Now I'm assuming is a heel. <clears throat> well, I just think he's a lone, you know, wolf or whatever. Okay, I mean, again, now we're gonna get a triple threat, most likely for the uh, TNT <laughs> title. I don't believe that the ROH title would be on the line. Is that so bad, though? I mean, Samoa Joe, Wardlow, and uh, Luke Hobbs? I'll take you both on. Honest to to God, thank God Samoa Joe is in this match because just having Hobbs and Wardlow. And again, uh, Hobbs has improved slightly, um, but not much just in terms of being a monster heel. You know, (laughs) and and again, it's going to be – the match quality probably won't be as as – good uh, you know what they should do i'll tell you what they should do put the ring of honor title on the line and the t the tnt title on the line 
if if somebody the, the if somebody title, you mean? if yes if somebody pins Joe they get that belt. If someone pins Wardlow, they get that belt. If someone pins Hobbs, who doesn't have a belt, he's then eliminated from the match, and the match continues with the two champions, and it's all on the line. Have a match. Uh, so like a three, great so idea, like, Joe. Imagine Can't that. Yeah. Wow. And then it, you don't know what the fuck's going to happen. But again, that I, I don't agree with that, and I, and I hope they don't do it because – and maybe this is a way to incorporate Joe, but, dude, I'm fine with Wardlow and Hobbs. Let them have their beef that they have. I don't want Samoa Joe now coming into it. That's like, more beef. Yeah, I don't want that. Save that for later. So I'm hoping I'm hoping this is a setup for later, things to come later, and Hobbs and Wardlow are still gonna have their their one on one match. I don't want to see it become a triple threat. That's Well, that's what it's looking like. And again, no, we already have no. multi man matches on the pay per view, so oh. how he looks. Oh. Look at his look, how he looks. Look at his look, he looks like a crook. Look at him, look like he look. Look at, look look at, at his, his look. look. That he looks, look what he looks like a crook. I'm coming for you, crook in the nook. I'm coming for you. I look like a crook. And look at his look. How he looks. I always look, look fly. Look how he looks. Look at his look. How he looks. Look at his look. How he looks. Look at his look. You get shook. Shook. Look at his look. You get shook. Look at his look. How he looks. Look at his look, he looks like a crook. Look at his look, you're getting kind of shook. Look at his look, look at his look, how he looks. It's been a while since look I've heard this look, one. You can, you can right? What's up, Joe? This is my first time donating because I'm a disgusting poor. Do you think MJF is turning heel because he's making us believe the devil doesn't exist? I don't know what's up with that. I just think that, uh, I think he is gonna go heal everyone really believes that that he's gonna this is all a rouge a ruse go ahead Rustafa. uh and thank you what's his name uh nine doc nine doc thank you bro and thank you for taking that much money if you're damn if you're that struggling i mean i'm struggling too but i mean i appreciate you man if dropping that much 12 bucks is a lot if you're struggling thank you so so speaking of Tony Schiavone, Tony Schiavone is standing in the ring and introduces uh, Britt Baker and Soraya. Now, <laughs> Soraya was, you know, saying last week previously in the interviews she did with Renee, saying like, you know, I got one more doctor that I have to, you know, get cleared from and blah, blah, blah. And I, and I was only just assuming she meant that as a double entendre, which in a way she did. And Soraya, Soraya just basically says, I am cleared and it's bad news for, for Britt Baker. Britt Baker then goes into the promo, and again, you you showed the promo a little bit earlier, Joe. Again, nothing f that I found like you know any flaws in Britt Baker's promo. She's always been solid. I mean, as especially since she's been a heel for the past like year and a half, two years, and she needed to be that way because unfortunately, as a babyface, it was I was like at first it was okay, but then it was horrible. You know what I yeah. mean? And, and 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 a lot of people tend to forget that that she tried as a baby face and it just failed. And then when she became a heel, she got over. Yeah, she's so much better as as a as a heel. But also, like I was saying uh, earlier, um, you know, the crowd was ready to cheer Soraya, uh, Soraya, Soraya sis. And then, um, you know, Brit, <laughs> she just really kind of put Britt Baker down the wrong way, and that changed things a little bit. But it shows everybody likes both of these two. Um, but it my it's weird, man. But yeah, Brit works better as a heel, and I I, I think that it's just saying she's not a star and stuff like that. That was kind of heelish. Of well, well, Soraya I'm gonna talk. Though. Well, I'm gonna talk about that. We're gonna okay. talk about that because again, it's clear that Brit is the heel. Soraya right. is basically uh, Soraya is basically saying that you're talking about how I've not you know I'm just a star <laughs> just coming in just trying to like steal the spotlight from all the other guys. Well, first and foremost, she's not wrong in the sense that Soraya be being like, you know, third, I think she's what, second, third generation, whatever, in her family. Yeah. And that she busted her ass just to get even to the WWE. I mean, again, she had a movie made about her for crying out loud. And the fact that The Rock produced it. Um, I still am mad that that movie, that. that movie didn't end with, with the orgy story. Oh, um, I mean, I know you wanted that, but unfortunately, it was so never close. Happened. It was so close. <laughs> Uh, I'm, Maybe we'll I'm, get I, it in the sequel, Joe. Maybe we get a sequel and we get the orgy scene then. Yeah, who's going to produce that? TK? Yeah. Oh, Why man. Not? 
Well, put it this way. So Soraya is basically saying the that fall like, and you know, rise I, of Soraya. I've been in this business since I was I was born. I've been in this. I've been here professionally for 17 years. I got hit by a car and still made the show because I loved it. I wrestled for free and I loved it. I got turned out by promoters. She's basically saying all the things that she was willing to do to sacrifice that Britt apparently has not done. I even looked into Britt Baker's uh, past before AEW. She's only wrestled in the indies. I believe it was called IWC. Um, and uh, basically, she didn't really – she didn't travel the way that uh, Paige or uh, Soraya <laughs> traveled. She, she talked about performing at the Garden, O2 Arena, Tokyo Dome, basically saying that Britt Baker hasn't done anything. Now, granted that Britt Baker – AEW is the biggest promotion she's ever been in. Uh, Paige has, or Soraya has been in WWE. She's been in um, her family's promotions and various other different uh, indie promotions in Europe. So, again, she did pay her dues. And yes, she is a quote-unquote superstar. Uh, she's basically telling Brit that she's not superstar material because of her experience and because of what it takes to be a superstar. Um, I... I got this promo. It was just a matter of, you know, but, the, but this was what was interesting. So they go into the fighting and all uh, uh, towards the end of the, of the, of the promo and, uh, Soraya does her finisher and you can hear some booze. Yes. Which I thought was interesting because she put her down the wrong way. She should never, yeah. I, I hope all the wrestlers on the podcasts tomorrow, you know, bring this up. She really, she made a big mistake saying like, you're not a star. You haven't done anything. It's like, no, to these people, dude, she has done a lot, and they've liked her, and she's been a star here. So that was absolutely wrong. Big mistake by Soraya in real life for, for saying that in the promo. I, I mean, I, it, it's easy to get into the wrestling business when your family's running a fucking promotion. It's not yeah, easy to get into the wrestling business it, the other way. It's, this, it's, is, well, this is true. Yeah, it's just it's, I, neither one should have been put down that way. It was just a mistake. She was trying to... We know what she was trying to do. It just, you know, uh, you know, somebody, somebody who's been in the wrestling business as long as Soraya Page, you know, you just can't believe she would say something like that. Like, and, and the Boston crowd went, "Ooh!" Like they didn't. Well, 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 I mean, I'll argue that you know, Randy Savage, you know, again was in an outlaw territory with his father, even though that the you know that the territory wasn't quote unquote like legit, legit, like let's say Memphis was, but. Again, no. the The other thing was like they didn't they weren't talking about each other's territories in the sense of you know I'm going to take over your territory. They were just like you know busting each other's shops on via programs, which I mean AEW has been doing what is consistently. That, what does that mean? What do you mean ter taking over territories? This is one of those I love. And, 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 Mustafa, you're, I love these things when you like you just brought up territories and Macho Man. What does that have to do with this? I'm saying that Macho okay Macho Man was part of a wrestling family as was alluded to right right right, right. that. Soraya is a part of a wrestling family, and you uh -huh. think that it would be easier for another generation to come out of that territory in a way it could be, but then at the same time, mm -hmm. it's not as easy to make it elsewhere in which Randy eventually well, you, had to do. You're still going to make it, yeah. So I see what you're saying now. So you're still going to make it. Yeah, I mean, the 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 Randy Savage's family, the Pompho, like they, they, they were... They were well known, but yeah, you still got to come into WWE and be good. He could have came into WWE. I mean, think of all the other fa wrestling families where someone came into the WWE and they didn't really make it or they didn't really work well. Curtis, you know, they, Cur well, yeah, Curtis Axel got got dumped by Vince <laughs> because yeah, because yeah. They, they book Curtis well, Axel and that's horrible. a little and yeah, and they've got that's status right there, legendary status. But I mean, they didn't have. I don't know what Larry the Axe's wrestling company was called, uh, but, you know, like Jerry Lawler came in. Usually these people come in because, you know, Vince knows. Like, these guys have been good. They've been in wrestling. You know, they, 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 he knows what's going on with them. You know what I mean? So I get that. And with Paige, I mean, she came into NXT when she was, what, 20? Dude, she was young. <laughs> yeah. You remember they were she waiting to young. sign her when she was 18, and we talked about it. Back then, way back in 2012, hey, WWE is going to sign this girl, but she, you know, they're waiting for her to be old enough or something like that. We talked about it way, 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 way back. Yeah, and granted, I, I respect the fact that, again, they saw her with a lot of talent even back then. I mean, this is what, 2014 when she made it to Raw <laughs> and she beat AJ for the title? Right. I mean, I mean, again, that doesn't happen every day. You know what I mean? I can't remember the. I, I, please forgive me, Chad. I don't remember the the girl's name that's in uh, NXT right now. She's like twenty years old. She just wrestled on uh, uh, Halloween Havoc and had a great match with her former tag partner. But man, it it just basically goes to show that 
there there are some people, even Austin Theory, who's like what, like twenty three years old, and is already making. You know, I mean, yeah, he's not doing too well right now with all the losses he's been making, but. I mean, still, at the end of the day, there still are exceptions, but again, it doesn't happen with everybody. No, it doesn't. You no. raised a piece of shit. Someone said Agnes Arena holds graduations. <laughs> Mine was in same building Hogan won his last WCW title and where Wyndham turned on Lex and joined Horseman, <laughs> who was dude that attacked Nikki Talliance on NXT. Stacey Abrams and Michael Strahan are same person. <laughs> Samoa Joe's 67th heel turn and I don't know who did anything on NXT because I didn't watch NXT and yet the Aganeth Arena does do graduations Ugh. Yes, that is just a sad that they didn't I mean I was there it was almost sold out when I was there you raised a piece of shit Kimberly Page more charismatic than Ethan Page anyone else it. wanna see me a yim and Keith Lee fuck no. the guns should work out more like their dad yep. you sound and look better Joe that AIDS can really take a toll on ya. Is Ricky Starks hurt or on velocity? Wings. Wow. Wow. They got all that dollar, let me tell you that. I don't feel very good, wow. though. I'll tell you that. Something's wrong. Well, I mean, we'll talk about Ricky Starks later, but yeah, no, I, I understand completely. It's just, wow. Oh, it's time to scissor me. Don't get through. Just scissor me. Scissor me. Scissor me. Oh my god, yes. It's a greeting, it's a greeting. In the way that they rest up here, man. Sup, Joe. Miss you. <laughs> Is Logan Paul the greatest three-match wrestler of all time? Also, guess his Royal Rumble entry correctly, and I'll super chat you one hundred dollars with a thumbs up. Wait, what? Um, sub Joe Logan Paul, the greatest three-match wrestler of all time? Yes, he might be. Guess his Royal Rumble entry. Oh, for this year? Guess Logan Logan Paul's not going to have one. He's going to be out injured. Yeah, he's not. He's not coming back anytime soon. He's going to be out for a while. Um, Bro, he ain't but coming we'll, we'll, back. Well, I'm, I'm actually going to talk about that later on. Thank you, Adam Telmage. Well, we better fucking squish it together because we got much, much time left. Adam Telmaj, thanks for the nine ninety nine. Uh, let me get one more in here. <laughs> Shit bum. Drew Barr. I'm practicing. I'm practicing in front of all of you tonight. Uh, Drew Barr 100, thank you for the $2. Adam Telmaj, thank you. And Soundwave 92 with the drop of $51. That's the highest tonight. Go ahead, Rustava. I was just going to say backstage we have... Um uh, the best friends and as well as uh, Jay Lethal and uh, his crew. And basically uh, the challenge is being uh, made for uh, Trent and Jay Lethal. Uh, one thing leads to another. And then we go into a match between Trent and Jay Lethal. And um, I barely was able to keep my eyes glued on this match because I had like so much I had to do. But overall, <laughs> Jay Lethal gets the win. And um, Jeff Jarrett eventually comes out on stage and tries to do a promo, <laughs> does his promo. And then there, apparently there's some guy that they're working in the storyline that's just telling them the you know counting them down and Jeff's warning him don't count me down. Why does that happen? Have you noticed that like that's happening like every other week? Someone gets mad at being counted down every other week. I really haven't noticed it, but really, I mean, I even noticed it. WWE even did it, and I'm like, dude, this is like the 50th time they've done it because we talked about it like a few months ago when it happened because we were like. Remember when Austin did that? Don't count me down. Don't count me. And then he threw the producer into the ladder. Tie back in the my day. shoe. Yeah, like it was that sort of thing. And we were talking about it like that. And it, this is the, I want to say it's like the third or fourth time recently that I've heard someone say, don't count me down on AEW. And then on WWE, they did it a couple weeks ago, which I'm like, what the fuck? Everybody's doing that now, but okay. So we come back from, uh... oh, go ahead. I was going to say, it's kind of weird that everyone complaining about that recently maybe it's a problem with production or something right possibly i mean i mean there was a lot of production like hearsay i mean even with the cameras tonight was kind of weird even during the acclaims entrance the camera was like being like weird and like jump cutting here and there and it was just was what it was well then moxley and regal <laughs> hit the ring and uh, moxley says at the age of 25 he thought he had it all figured out and then he's like, you know, it reminds me of MJF. 
Moxley beat MJF before back in 2020 and let him know that uh, where he stands uh, in a very similar situation with Regal. Moxley wants MJF to be the guy, but it's not his time yet. MJF calls himself the pillar and never has been able to carry the weight of the company. And he calls himself the devil. Moxley says, I've seen a devil and you're not him. So, I mean, again, gr- decent promo, great promo. Uh, you know, and again, I've always liked Moxley in his this more. Uh, this version of Moxley has been the best. Like, he took responsibility early this year to take care of himself. Then he came back strong, ended up uh, becoming the interim champion during the time when Punk was supposed to be really running you know this this the show and now it's really been proven that he is truly a pillar of the company and um i mean again it's just a shame though because i guarantee you like you know once he drops the belt to mjf this guy's going on a pretty damn good vacation because he's earned it yeah absolutely he i mean he was supposed to be on it so yeah it'd be it'd be good to get him a break if he needs it because God damn, man. He's really putting in the effort for the team. Uh, thanks, uh, you know, to the elite and CM Punk. Can you imagine, man, all the people that are missing and stuff that should be there and everything? It's just unfathomable to think about. CM Punk could be here. The elite could be here. Like, there's, like... All- and, and, and remember, Joe, the original main event for Full Gear was supposed to be MJF and CM Punk. Right, right. That, that was the original, original main event. And, unfortunately... Punk, Punk robbed himself of that, uh, of that show. No, like, Punk got injured. Punk, Punk got Punk injured. Punk isn't the only one to blame for that. Well, he got injured. I mean, every everyone, everyone is to blame. You raised a piece of shit. T- Tony's to blame. Same car that hit Soraya must have hit Ruby Riot in the face. Oh Joe, my God! When was last time you could say the AFC East was best division in NFL? Rumor of Cena versus Gunther at Mania makes sense. John never had IC belt. I deep Mentos out of sky. That's a great point about AFC East. I mean, usually the Patriots are on the top, and then that's about it. But yeah, th- now they're all pretty decent. Although you know the Pats are, you know, they're, they're not going to do anything. They're something. Uh, Neither are the Jets. Uh, I'm curious on where they heard the rumor Cena versus Gunter. No, I, I mean, I thought it would have been John Cena versus uh, Austin Theory. For Mania. No, because they're saying that uh, Cena never had the IC belt, and that's why he's gonna go after Gunter. Possibly, Walter, but the thing, but, or whatever but the, the fuck his name is, <laughs> right? But the th- but the funny thing is, though, it's like Cena wouldn't be walking away with the belt, and yes, he would be making Gunther that much more. Super but it's just like chat party. Who, who benefits more? What is the end game for Satnam Singh and you? I get the attraction aspect, but whom on the roster can work with him in a feud? What do you think? Blair, Elias, and thank you for the $9. I, you know, I don't get it. I don't understand it. He's just part of a group, you know, that's going to He's be, an enforcer. He's, that's all he is. That's it. Yeah, he's just a bodyguard type of guy, and it's not about anything else. And he's got, and they really just got him around to keep get him TV time until he's probably on TV more when Ring of Honor does whatever they're going to do. That's exactly um, what I'm thinking, and they're most likely going to pair him with somebody who will be a Ring of Honor talent. Yeah, and that's really that's it. I don't think there's much else, uh, you know, to him. He's uh, he's in a group just like. Uh, and by the way, speaking of big guys, you know, Blair Eliason just made me think of this. Just another waste of time, run of the mill, empty fucking words coming out of his stupid mouth. Lance Archer tonight. Taking out somebody yeah. in the back and going, if somebody dies, everybody dies. Like man, yeah, he, that, yeah. It took out. It took out. Uh, is he retarded? Starts, I mean, is that guy like where? I mean, dude, he sounds exactly the same as every other time I make fun of him. I mean, and everybody it, dies. Out, everybody dies. Everyone dies. Where, 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 when did he do that? I want to find that clip because it's so bad that I want to watch it. I think I think he did it after the. Um, after the uh, the match with uh, Hater and, and Blue, which, I mean, again, wasn't really anything to spectacular. Well, he didn't the first uh, time I heard it, he would do, he would he said it with uh, Moxley. <clears throat> well, yeah, but I mean, tonight. Oh, here it is. I found it. Okay. We need help. We need help. Help. And then you got Alex Marvez, who's the worst. Pretty Just the Starks. worst. Well, this is your Ricky Star- oh. we got a very simple message. It's that everybody... <laughs> Everybody dies. Everybody gets tournament dies. <laughs> God, he is awful. Like I, I, I don't. I, I just. How is this guy still employed? 
Uh, honest, honestly, decent worker, but yes, just, I agree. The mic, the, the mic skills are just not there. I mean, again, Jake the Stick Roberts was probably the best thing that could have happened to him. In, but the funny thing is, he uh, he had to open his mouth. Not yeah. Jake, but Alex Marvez sucks too. He's the yeah. worst. He's everything yeah, he does he in the knows. back. Hey guys, I'm here in the back and something's happening. And you're just like, man, I don't. Everything you're doing, I don't believe it already. Whatever's happening, I don't believe it. And then he's always like. Oh no! Like he's dude, Alec. I, I'm sorry. I hate life. I, I'm sorry. Like the fact. Who's who's worse, him or Byron Saxon backstage? No, I love Byron Saxon. Okay. I enjoy Byron Saxon backstage. I think Byron Saxon is actually Byron Saxon is actually pretty good backstage. I mean, he's a little goofy, but it's like he's like I get it. Alex Marvez is terrible. This guy is awful. Remember when he was on commentary the first time around when AEW started? Yeah, that was terrible. He's just not. I mean, that might have been better than this. But the AEW World well, Title Eliminator well, Tournament. But- your- Why are see? Look at. Oh my God, bro. He's so fucking terrible. Fucking Renee. Hey, can you get your bug eyes to to go down a little bit? Like, wait a minute. Let's just watch. Let's watch again. I want to see how this plays out because I missed it maybe the first World time. Champion, because I'm not a man. I'm a machine. All right, here it is. Here it is. I was hoping to talk with Ricky Starks about the AEW World Title Eliminator Marvez, Tournament. But- your- so when they came, when they cut to him, they made a huge mistake because when they when they cut to him, so, you wanted- his eyes were like he was like this, and then he had to start, and he was like, "I was hoping to get." And it was like, "Oh, all right." So you like he should have been already like. Like acting before the camera even came on, or the director fucked up. But either way, he's bad. Even if there wasn't a like a directing mistake, like he's bad anyway. Like watch this when they cut back to him. Here it comes. Oh, here it comes. Where is it? Here it is. Watch this cut. Ready? Ready? <gasps> now I'm gonna get, act excited. But if this was really going on right now, he would already have had his eyes wide open and, and excited because this is going on supposedly right now. Get your ass over here. You wanted to talk to pretty Ricky Starks? Well, this is your Ricky Starks. You got a very simple message. It's that everybody... Everybody dies! That was everybody awesome. Tournament dies. Ricky's not making it to the tournament. This is mine. <laughs> hey, we need help. We need... Good Lord, he's terrible. It's Every, so awkward as hell watching that. Everybody dies. Everybody dies. This is going to happen. Everybody dies. Everybody dies. I'm a fucking retard. I'm a fucking retard. Like, everybody dies. Like everybody dies. more retarded oh, than me, Joe. God, I never... Hey, guess what? You never you never win anything, Lance Archer. You never win. You never pin. And nobody certainly dies. And by the but way, you've got, the, you've got dreadlocks dies. that are white. I just want to let you know. Do you know your dreadlocks are <laughs> it white? It over to me. I don't know what they are, but what the fuck is this guy? This guy. The only people that you, die are the audience and their seat from boredom. You could not have any two better people in this segment than Alex fucking Marvez, who is, I'm sorry, he's somebody's friend, obviously, because he seems like a sweet guy. He sucks at this backstage. He's definitely stuff. TK's friend, I'll tell you that much. This right sucks. And, and Lance Archer is trash. Everybody dies. Stop saying that. Stop it. I, if you don't stop saying it, Lance Archer, I swear to God, you might be bigger than me, stronger than me, crazier than me. You might have a knife. I'm five foot ten and out of shape. Um, you know what, bro? Everybody I will cries. fucking fight you. I will fight you over this if you want. I'll, you know, Ryback, you want to get mad at me in person? You heard what I said on the internet. Guess what, Lance Archer? I will fucking fight you. I don't care over this because you I- suck, pal. Everybody, everybody dies. Everybody, just everybody dies. Hey, 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 would you give them the same advice that you gave Roman Reigns back in 2016 where it's like you would invite him to your basement and teach him how to do a promo? I don't even think that would work. I don't. I just, I don't even, I'd get a phone call with him if he wants to have a phone call. Just listen to this. See, I'll, I'll just fix it for you right now. Never say everybody dies ever again. That's all. That's all. There's your hit. That's it. Never everybody say everybody cries. dies. Stop saying it. Everybody dies. Everybody dies. And, there, and, then, there, and then everybody dies. Lance Archer's Lance Archer's gimmick is that he's retarded. Like, I mean, to me, he he's more retarded than me, Joe. Oh my God, no! You're you look you're a fucking mathematician compared to him. <laughs> What's right? two plus two? Thomas Jefferson, sucker. <laughs> Jack party. First ever Bird Bowl: Ravens versus Eagles. Oh my God! I'll never forget. 
when I first heard that Thomas Jefferson thing. I almost fucking... I cried laughing when I heard that, dude. Ravens uh, versus Eagles. Thank you, Adam Telmage. So we're going to go into the main event. Oh, my so. God, dude. I, I, I forgot all about that, dude. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Boy, my God. Wait, we talk about the Brian Danielson match with Sammy? I'm going to pass Sammy? out, bro. I'm going to pass Super out, dude. Super chat. Are you going to play it right now? Play it. <laughs> I got to hear Logan Paul next movie winner after he's healthy. <laughs> well, that's easy. Gimmick. Thomas we'll Jefferson, sucker. The and the cash in. Oh, my God. Logan Paul next Money in the Bank winner. After he's healthy, oh, fits the gimmick. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I mean, they should with him. He won't be yeah, there to gonna, promote he, it. But he's going to lose. He's going to lose. He's not going to yeah. win the title. That's right. And he won't be there to, to do it all the time. And, so. by, and by the way, Joe, they're bringing back King of the Ring next year. So what's good money in the bank is anymore? Um, What do you mean? I mean, it's... Well, 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 remember when King of the Ring actually meant something where if you actually won the King of the but Ring... What does, it have to do with money in the, what does it have to do with money in the bank? Well, remember, King of the Ring was the first was the first of its kind. Of, if you won a tournament, you were the number one contender for the title. When then money, the money that year, dude, back in the it, when Ma Mabel was the number one contender, Owen Hart was the number one contender. Yeah, but the uh, King Brock of the Lesnar. the King of the Ring didn't make you the number one contender. Yeah, it did absolutely it did. No, the King of the Ring was just sort of like a like it was known that if you sort of won the king of the ring you were somebody that they were looking at to potentially get a push you know what i mean but, but that's uh, brock lesnar became the number one contender after he won king of the ring yeah yeah because they were looking at him to yeah, give but, him a push yeah but i mean like triple h won the king of the ring you know what i mean like he, he was gonna win the king of the ring the year stone cold won it and he wasn't exactly about to get a fucking world title right shot. right there, there were certain king of the ring people i'm not saying everyone but i'm just i just brought up a few people that i did that i eventually got the title shot like two months later at SummerSlam. okay but, I, but I mean? i'm just After saying it that. never was officially anything that like it's not like the rumble the rumble you get a shot at the world title <laughs> wrestlemania king of the ring there was no official thing unless there was like one or two times where they did say that but most of the time it was just the king of the ring you won the king of the ring that's it some people and won again, the king money, of the ring they went nowhere and again, money Sheamus. in the bank, unfortunately, in the past couple of years has really not meant that much in terms of we already kind of know there's no there's no surprise anymore when it comes to you know money in the bank. Like the only major surprises that I would think, right? You know, if you want to do it that same night, okay, or the next night, okay. But the two best money in the bank cashings that ever happened were both Edge and Seth Rollins, <laughs> bar none. Well, let's hear it. Two plus two, Thomas Jefferson, sucker. <laughs> and that short yellow bus pulling up in front. Oh my God, bro. Meep, meep. Dude, uh, I will. Obviously, Booker T, you're a highly intelligent man. <laughs> <laughs> dude, dude, I, I want to say that I was on my couch watching that and i spit out soda like that like i remember fucking roaring over that dude like, i think that was the same problem where jericho uh where you got a man beast and a hose beast <laughs> i don't remember that i think it might have been because you know, jericho came out afterwards i think no 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 they were on stage at the same time I think, oh were they I oh he was out yeah. there. yeah well he was definitely out there oh yeah he is out there yep that's it <laughs> What's two plus two? That's easy. Thomas Jefferson sucker. Like, dude, I fucking, <laughs> I don't know. It's the way The Rock delivers it. And Yo, there was one promo that they did when he did backstage where um, he's like, little book of Mac. First words out of his mouth. Can you dig it, sucker? And then him doing the Shane McMahon <laughs> dancing <laughs> around. Oh, God. But uh, at any rate, going through the main event, uh, what did you think of the two out of three falls match? I mean, it was good. It was good. I mean, for me, it, for me, it felt uh, rushed. Uh, Sammy versus Daniel Bryan. It was good, right? but yeah, I, I was going to say what you said. It, it, it Again, it, because of time, it didn't... Something was... Like, these two guys at a pay-per-view... Would know, kill it. Yeah, and I think they did do a good job, and I, did, I was entertained by the match, and I did like it, but it felt like they were rushing through things, like you just said. Because they put the women's match, like, literally right up against it, and I was just like, guys... Even if you wanted the women's match, either cut the time shorter or don't put it at all, you know, yeah. or, yep. you know, cause it just felt so right. And again, granted, good job on their part. You know, the first fall was a DQ. I get it because of time restraints. 
<laughs> and it explained why Sammy wanted to be a little bit more vicious and basically used the microphone to kind of cut open Sammy and the whole nine. Um, a two out which, of three falls match needs like 25 to 30 minutes or like 30, I, really 30 minutes is what it needs. And at first I thought the referee wasn't going to DQ Sammy like for whatever reason. And then finally he rang the bell and I was like, okay, great. Well, they, and, did, uh, they did wrestle for 20 minutes. I got to tell you, they did wrestle for 20 minutes. But yeah, and, there, and, it, and towards the end, it really picked up steam. Um, and finally, uh, Brian uh, basically put the, uh, the the rings of Saturn on Sammy, and then eventually Sammy had to. Uh, I'm not sure if it was a tap out or, uh, or 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 a pass out. I can't remember, but yeah, uh, Sam, Brian. He wins passed and, out. Yeah, he passed out. And the referee called it. Yeah, and then Brian wins, and that's pretty much dynamite tonight i gave it a 6.5 mainly because i actually did enjoy the uh and I'll, I'll even say this the only other women's promo between two women that i actually did like up until this point was brit and uh ruby riot last september and uh tonight i thought it was a decent promo even though like you know again there might have been some flubs here and there maybe uh, i still was entertained by it so i give it i'm giving it a show 6.5 it beat raw Boom, I agree. This beat Raw, and certainly the Boston crowd helped it. So that was good that the crowd was into it, made you want to be into it even more, even if it wasn't the greatest thing. So, yeah, 6.5 for me as well. Uh, Dan, what do you think? <laughs> Did he just fart? Right no, now? the microphone just shit itself. Uh, Is that better now? Oh, yeah. yeah. What would you give it, Dan? A uh, five. Wow. wow. All right. Well, I get it though. I get it. It was a little bit lacky. I get it. So, so we're, somebody brought this up earlier. Oh, I wanted to say this before I forget. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like it sounds like a Star Wars character. <laughs> sounds like a droid. Wow. All right. Well, Discord has died. Wow. Dan Kennedy is his uh microphone is dead. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I want to thank everybody for being here tonight. Discord shit its pants. Uh Soundwave 92 with the top donation of $51. Thank you to Rustafa for being here, man, uh to cover this with me as best we could here tonight. And uh, really, thank you, Soundwave, man, for the big $51 drop uh, tonight on the show. And, yeah, I feel like I'm shadow banned on YouTube or something recently. Everything is dead, no matter what I do, except for when I talk about the Powerball. Um, so it, you really got to click like buttons. You got to hit bells. You got to sub, resub. You got to watch all my videos and watch more in order for YouTube to keep you in the loop about what I'm doing, or they may unsub you or something. You know, I don't know what the fuck's going on. People are saying you know, all kinds of crazy stuff's going on. Uh, Dan Kennedy's microphone exploded, and uh, he took a dump on itself. Uh, more to come this week and certainly tomorrow. Hit that like button, and thanks to everybody who joined the Patreon. I will have the patron list out tomorrow. I know I meant to do it yesterday, but we'll have it out for you tomorrow, and we'll have some content out as well, plus me and my wife... Our podcast is finished and will be uploaded soon. Me and my wife, Till Death Do Us podcast, um, up on the patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show coming this week. And uh, Fuck you with a broomstick. Fuck you with a broomstick. Good stuff tonight. Wish I was in. I wish I was there, you know, in Boston tonight. But, you know, now it's a 45-minute drive, so I don't know. You raised a piece of shit. Lance Archer's losing because he doesn't have the energy he needs from his secret source of power contained in Jake Roberts' oxygen tank. Whoa! Shame Mibby wasn't around in I 80s. swear to God. Imagine Pop 4 Barry Horowitz cashing in. Can I compare you to a lisp from a rose? When Gar gets his tacos, give me gas. Do you want me to be your manager again, Lance Archer, and I'll beat the shit out of you? Dude, remember when, when, when Jake Roberts took a clothesline or got knocked out by somebody not that long ago? That was awesome to see that. I love Jake Roberts. God damn do I love him. Fucking love you, Jake Roberts, if you were listening. I'll tell you to your face. I love you to death, Jake Roberts. I'm going to gargle your piss! 
All right, Axel Bonilla, we saw your super chat earlier, actually. I think you donated earlier, right? I saw it. Axel Bonilla, you said Jeff Jarrett took a shot of bronze stupid. That was like an hour ago. Unless you did another one. Hit that like button. I miss Jake Roberts, yeah. And I miss Jake. <coughs> I miss my Jake. Do you guys want me to do the Herschel Walker from the other night? I heard Nick Aldis had a small cock. I don't know where I heard that, but I'm hearing it. Where's the Herschel Walker that I did the other night? I actually did uh, do a nice little speech of Herschel Walker. War not rounds almost sounds like Warlock. See, that's what I'm talking about. Super chat party. Will tactics and dropping a donut. Jealous fussus. They jealous of us. Don't be jealous of us. us. Hey, listen, we're the New England Patriots. I hear it as well. You're hearing a lot of us talking about this tonight. Let's check in though now. Here it is. Here it is. Good night, everybody. Thanks Let's for being here. here. Is this it? Yeah, I hope you all had fun during the midterms. Herschel Walker was elected, and he's got brain damage. Um, Fetterman was elected in Pennsylvania, and he's got brain damage. A bunch of brain damaged people in charge. It's going to be great. You guys are going to enjoy I'm it. I'm trying to dial it up here, and I, I don't know. <laughs> Between oh. Fetterman and Herschel Walker. Oh, here we go. Maybe this is it. Enjoy. I can't believe Herschel Walker. I know that he's got special needs, but he might have CTE, but he's going to speak. Let's listen to this. Oh, but what are doing tonight? I yeah, just want to say we ain't going to give up for nothing. I am confident in what we do here, and I'm confident the people of Georgia speak to me, and they all know that I love them. And I love these people, and that's why I run this race there. And I'm telling all you motherfuckers out there, excuse my language, but they got me riled up here. Now we are going to never give up until the end of the night. We ain't going to never give up until the end of the night. We ain't going to give up a fight because we all crazy here. And my opponent ain't going to give up, and I ain't going to give up either. So I got some words to say to him tonight. I want to tell him, I'm going to say it. I know that I shouldn't be saying some of these things here in front of all you, but I, you, you supported me so much through all this here that I want to tell you this. Sir, I don't think you should say it. Please don't, don't say it. What, don't say it here. I say is what I say I, in front of you. Go away. Go away. It's just you've had a couple of drinks. I don't think you should. Oh, they full of boulder dash. Boulder dash. I ain't nothing. Now, I'm going to say what I want to say because I can. And here's what I got to say. Raf Raphael Warnock, you ugly, bald motherfucker. If you win this race tonight, I'm going to crush your skull with my hands, you ugly motherfucker. You hear me? You ain't nothing. I'm coming for you. Ursa Walker's coming for your ass. All right, good night, ladies and gentlemen. Fuck Warnock in his asshole and his mother, too. All right, well, that's, uh, I did not, god damn, I did not expect to, uh, oof. <laughs> oh my god, bro. Um but the right, the right, I I don't have the tolerance of most other people. So if they screw with you, they screwing with Herschel Walker. If anybody gives you a trouble in this audience, I snap their head open and I shit in their mouth. By the way, today everybody who came to this rally has AIDS. Yay! Yeah. I hope all of you get AIDS. Yay! I remember about 17 years ago, I saw a man on the side of the road and he said, Sir, can I have 
And I said, man, what do you need $5 for? And he said to me, all I want is to grab some soup. I'm hungry. And when I was a kid, my father used to make me soup, and it made me feel better. And that's what I need now is a bowl of soup. And don't you know that I went down to BJ's Wholesale Club because I was a member. I did a promo for them when I was playing football. Yeah, football. I love you, Herschel. Sit on my face. Well, I gave that man not just $5, but I gave him three cases of Campbell's Chunky Noodle. And that motherfucker had a smile across his face like a special needs retard after you hand him a candy cane. (laughs) And that's the type of face I see on all you today now that you know I'm running. Yeah, yeah, oh, we love you. Have my babies. And I feel that pride in my belly. Hey, you tell me something. We're going to win. We're going to win despite the fact that I have CTE, despite the fact that my, you know, some of my disgusting things I've done in my past, we're going to win. You know why? Because ain't nobody look as sexy as Daddy Herschel Walker. Oh, okay. Well... Hey everybody, so I just wanted to tell everybody that I thank you for being here tonight. I, we did it. I knew we would do it. I knew I could do it. They told me a retard bald man couldn't win. And I knew that Herschel Walker was leading down in Georgia, so I knew I could lead up here. I told Dr. Oz to his face that he could go fuck himself. I told Dr. Oz... Go take some of that snake oil, uh, that snake oil, it's it's the spilling, the spilled, so that spilled, uh, uh, I told, I told Dr. Oz, and another thing too, if you thought I wasn't going to win this race here in Pennsylvania, uh, and, um, I always, um, I just, I, I, here's the thing going forward. The one thing I'm, I've got going on is we're going to, we're going to show how to paint pictures of reindeer to people. And by the way, I, I never wanted to be a father. And that's why when I, I, I impregnated a woman 30 years ago, I made her get an abortion. I didn't make her. I mean, I didn't make her get one. She wanted to get one. And I agreed with that. And that's why I'll protect that and protect you. And I, I'll protect myself from protecting, you know, something. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, um, so I guess the other thing that's important here is I... Um, I... Um, you know, I just want to say that, you know, I, hey, well, I'm not going to give up fighting for you here or ever again. My ears are the size of a porn star's cock. And I, I, I love my family and I shoot people. I mean, uh, I, I don't, I mean, I, I trust people. I don't shoot people. I try. I trust people. Some. I, I trust people to shoot. What? Anyway, I gotta. I really gotta uh, change my colostomy bag. Uh, I mean, I've gotta. I've gotta. I've gotta. I've gotta. I've gotta help you with trash can bags for the city because we have so much trash in the city. It's time to take it out. Take out the trash. Um. By the way, my sweatshirt's on sale right now. For three dollars off, you can get my sweatshirt right now. And a lot of people have been asking me what razors I use to shave my head, and I just want to tell you right now, my um, my favorite razor that I um, 
So Thanksgiving's coming up. So at Thanksgiving dinner, make sure to love each other. Anyway, that's it. I'm going. Good night, everybody. Thanks for being here. I really appreciate you. Uh, I really, I did this and you, you know, you made this happen possible. All right. And that's, and um, fuck people. Well, there you have it. Uh, Fetterman with his awkward speech delivery after victory, surprising victory in Pennsylvania. We'll have more on this later on on ABC News. I'm a guy with gray hair.